Hi traders, how's it going? This is Chris from Verlo Trading. I hope you guys are having a great day. And in this video in particular, we're going to be talking about two of the major players in the retail trading industry. And I'm going to be putting them together in the same video. And I'm going to basically give you some information about what is available here and um, how to connect and trade interactive brokers with Sierra Chart, which is a third party trading platform. Guys, if you don't know about me, my name is Chris and I operate this YouTube channel, Verillo Trading, and we talk about trading platform configuration, we talk about trading psychology, and I basically like to make videos about trading. So feel free to go check out some of those videos and remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe on the video, and I guarantee you're probably gonna have some comments and questions once we start getting through with this video. Okay, so the thesis behind this video is that I often receive a lot of questions and comments regarding how to do advanced trade management in Interactive Brokers Trading Platform, TWS. How do you exit half the position and have your stop adjust automatically to the rest of your position? Or how do you move orders to break even? Or how do you basically do what is called advanced trade management? Normally traders will send orders using TWS. You can use a book trader, you can use a chart, or you can send them directly from your quote board. And generally that's perfectly fine. But all of a sudden, if you're day trading or scalping or doing any kind of advanced order management, and in fact, if you've used this platform for any time at all, you would have noticed by now that it's really annoying to set up bracket orders and get them to work properly and have them adjust automatically. There's always gonna be a compensation being made. Now, what I can tell you for sure is that if you plug into Sierra Chart, there's gonna be no compensation here and you're gonna be able to do exactly what you're trying to do and way more things that you never thought were possible. So the first thing you gotta understand is that Sierra Chart is a third party trading platform and you've probably heard of Sierra Chart already. If you have not heard of them, Basically, they're a trading platform that was originally created for futures trading. And this platform is written all in native C++. And in my opinion, and in a lot of other traders' opinions, this platform is one of the most reliable, high-performance trading platforms out there today that is available to any retail customer out there in the world. Normally big institutional firms, right? They have the bankroll to hire the best developers out there and tell them exactly what they need and they will create for them their own proprietary trading platform. But you know, us as retail traders, we do not necessarily have the ability to do that. What happened here is that Sierra Chart has already done it for us. So basically in regards to connecting the platforms, it's actually really simple. So the first thing you would wanna do is go onto Sierra Chart's website go to their documentation and find the Interactive Brokers Trading Service documentation. All of the instructions are here and all of the problems and things that you're going to run into regarding market data or trading sort of issues are going to most probably be documented here. What you need to know about Sierra Chart is that they are a relatively small team of developers and the people who respond on the support boards are the senior engineers who develop the software. They recommend traders using interactive brokers connecting to Sierra Chart who are experienced traders and who are technically competent with computers and software and are willing to accept technical issues. Because what you need to understand about Interactive Brokers system is that number one, Interactive Brokers is a huge company. And when it comes to what they have in place right now, they're not really nimble, right? They have what they have and that's the way it is. So Sierra Chart has connected to them. And if there's any issues on Interactive Brokers side, Sierra Chart is not able to offer support for that. So if you do choose to do anything that I'm saying to you in this video, you need to understand this and you must do a lot of testing before you trade real money. And by the way, guys, trading is high risk activity and please trade only with risk capital. So we can keep going down and they basically give you setup instructions on how to connect to the API of Interactive Brokers. You you have to go into the general configuration of IB, then you go to the API settings and you need to make sure that everything is set as follows right here. And then once you've done that, assuming you've paid for usage time for Sierra Chart and some of the data feeds that are included with Sierra Chart that you need to pay for separately, then you go into Sierra Chart and you make sure that your data and trade service settings are set appropriately to the correct server address and port, and then everything should connect fine. Now I should mention before we start that this data feed that you're seeing on this chart is coming from Sierra Chart. This is the Denali Exchange data feed. This is a data feed that is provided by Sierra Chart. Sierra Chart does not provide support for bringing the interactive brokers market data 
into Sierra chart, you would want to use this data feed as I have found personally that it is far superior to any other data feed that I've tried, including CQG, Rhythmic, Interactive Brokers, and also IQ feed. So that's it. Now, this is a futures contract, but Sierra chart also offers stock market data, which comes from bar chart, but they're actually working on their own connection to the NASDAQ total view right now, which is going to be released at an undetermined date, probably at some point in the year 2022. So I'll give you a few examples here using this futures symbol, S&P 500 E-mini futures. I'll also show you how to place orders on a chart itself because it's basically the same process. So let's click to enter a long position at 91 and a quarter. I'm in a long position of one contract right now. I'm gonna click again to submit another limit buy order here and see if it gets filled at 90 and a half. If it doesn't, I'll try and move it. All right, I got filled on another long position right there. Now I'm long two contracts. And as you can see, my stop was automatically adjusted from one contract to two contracts, as well as my target, okay? So what I'm gonna do as a pure example, I'm gonna keep my stop far away just so it doesn't get triggered. So now I'll exit one contract for a one tick profit or I'll try to exit. And what you'll see is that if this order fills, my attached stop and target will adjust to the amount of my position. In that case, you see that they went from two to being one automatically. And I can do this as many times as I want. And uh, it will basically work. Okay, that's called scale in and scale out of the position. The next thing that I think is really, really relevant here, which is the ability to move orders and be nimble as a trader. I'll show you how that works now. So again, as you can see, I added one contract to my position. My stop is two, my limit is two, and it was adjusted automatically. Now, one thing I'll show you is the ability to move my stop with the press of a button right there, okay? So I can move my stop to any price by hovering my mouse over the correct price that I wanna move it to. I can also do the same with my limit order, right? So if I wanna get out of the trade right now, I could simply by pressing a key on my keyboard. See if I can get filled on a limit order right there. There we go, so again, I sold one, my stops and targets were adjusted to one. That's fine. I think you understand the principle by now. Um, a few hotkeys that I have assigned, again, that I showed you, I can move the attached stops and the attached targets. I can also move them up or down one tick at a time, which is useful if you're trading something like bonds or a thicker market, basically. Uh, obviously, if you're trading a thin market like crude oil or NASDAQ, the one tick movement is not going to be that efficient, but at sometimes it could be pretty useful. For example, if you think that the market's about to rip three, four more ticks and you think you can squeeze a few more ticks out of it, it, it's kind of helpful and I've definitely been in that scenario before. Okay, so now I'll move that limit order down and I got filled to get out of that trade. Okay, so the next example here is gonna be demonstrating sending orders using a chart on Sierra chart. We're still connected to interactive brokers and I just wanna show you how the trading system is basically identical no matter if you're using a chart or a DOM. In fact, the DOM and the chart are fully integrated. So for example, here we have just a basic chart and we're going to click on the top of the window, trade, and then we're going to click on attach trade window to chart. So the thing you have to know about your trade management in Sierra chart is that all of the bracket order configuration is done all in this menu right here. So you can figure your trading size, you can figure your order type, you can figure how far away targets and stops are going to be. And just a quick note, in this video, I'm not gonna be going through every single detail about how to configure targets and stops in Sierra chart. I'll save that for a future video. Again, we have you know a target and a stop. We can choose how far away they are. And there's also a number of more advanced order types here that are available. And uh, I'll just mention that a lot of these order types, including the trade volume triggered stop or bid ask quantity triggered stop or limit touch chase orders are order types that are not available in most retail trading platforms. And if you don't know what those are, it's okay. You can go and do your research to figure out how they would be helpful as a day trader. So I'm just gonna give you another quick example here demonstrating the same sort of trading ideas, but on a chart in this case, and I'm actually set to a stock. A few things I should mention about connecting interactive brokers to Sierra chart to trade stocks or options. Um, the symbology on the side of interactive brokers is a little bit complicated. In some cases, you're going to need to place the entire symbol here in order to get the right symbol and trade it. 
in this case, I'm actually paying for a stock market data feed through Sierra Chart. So the data is coming from Sierra Chart, but my orders are being sent to my trading service, which is Interactive Brokers, because that's what I'm connected to. I'll change the symbol of this chart to Apple and hit Apply. And you know that the market data is coming from Sierra Chart. When you see at the top of the chart, there's a letter M next to the symbol. What I've noticed sometimes is that you can run into certain trading issues if you are not using the proper interactive brokers symbols. Put the proper symbol in this box right here in the chart settings of Sierra Chart, which is the trade and current quote symbol. So what I'm gonna do is basically get a template for the IB symbol format, which is the symbol for the stock dash STK dash smart slash the exchange that it trades on, in this case, the NASDAQ dash the currency it's in, which is the USD. So I'll paste that over into the trade and current quote symbol and make sure that AAPL is selected. And I know this is quite an annoying step, but this is something that you might have to deal with if you're trying to trade stocks with interactive brokers connected to Sierra chart. Okay, so there's just a couple other settings you need to make sure are set properly or you might run into a few problems, at least I have. The first one is here when you click on the M icon, go to settings. And when I turn this setting on, use order fill calculated position, I noticed it was more consistent when I was trading stocks with interactive brokers. So you might have to turn that on, that's one thing. So next we're gonna just make sure trade simulation mode is turned off and of course, that trading keyboard shortcuts are enabled, so I can now demonstrate to you some of the advanced order management here, bracket order management. So I'm gonna submit a buy limit order, and um, we'll try to trade this stock in blocks of 100. So I have a limit order right there. I'm filled at 178 and 17. You can see I have an attached stop and attached target. Now, of course, you can move your targets and stops individually. And if I do submit another order. buy order, you can see I've submitted another buy order right there and my stop and targets have adjusted accordingly. Now, in regards to moving orders, like the way I showed you on the DOM, all of the order functionality is basically identical on the chart. And as you can see, in this case, I had a trailing stop and it just um, started to trail automatically in this case. And I'll trail it a little bit higher. And uh, the other thing is that I kind of like here is that you can put a DOM right onto the chart so now I can actually use this DOM and uh, perform my right click keyboard shortcut button, which uh, allows me to move my existing limit order or stop order up or down a few ticks. So I've just moved that order there and I got out of the position. Let's do one more example here. I'll submit a sell limit order at this price. Chased it down by a few ticks and I'll place another sell order. Now, one thing that is important here is that even if I have use attached orders turned on and I have the scale in and scale out features enabled, when I submit another order that will add to my position, in this case, scale in, you'll see that it submits an order without attached orders. That's because I have the scale in functionality turned on. The same will be true if I submit an order to exit my position because I have scale out turned on. You can see that it submitted a buy limit order right there without any attached orders. So there's no additional orders that are going to be added. It's totally functional. Now that the market is in our favor here, we're a few points in the money, I can actually choose to move my order to that price and I just decided to exit the position um, for a profit in that case. So that's just a demonstration of some of the trade management in Sierra Chart. And um, if you guys are interested, you need to visit sierrachart.com and read some of their documentation. This was just a basic video. If you do plan to use Sierra Chart in the future, or if you do use Sierra Chart and you run into any kind of issue, please refrain, if you can, from submitting support tickets to their support board. Unless it's something that is very important that you have already searched about and have not found any answer, then you should really not post that. If you do have questions about certain things like that, make sure to search up before because there's a high probability that someone has already asked the question. Okay guys, I just wanted to remind you of that. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to smash the like button and I'll catch you in the next video. Take care guys, bye.